happy holidays, India. Happy holidays, Nick. Good to see you. I found some, what I think would be some good intro music. Can I play it? No. All right, so it's like, wait for it. And then kind of build. Wow. Yeah, and that's wow. actually copyright free. So um, oh. we can yeah, do that. that really drives me as like a holidays purist. Um, <laughs> oh, really? What would, yeah. you, what would you have liked? You would have liked us to get sued for some Andy Williams most wonderful time of year or something? Um, if I sing it, could we still get sued? Um, I think that's a great, I feel like we should, yes. Well, I don't know. I think I like out of bad taste, maybe, I don't know. I think you can play up to 15 seconds of something before you infringe on copyright. You just, you just called that. That's very arbitrary, isn't it? There's, it's like 10 or 15 seconds. I'm positive. I know it. Okay. Also, who's going to report us? Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Well, it depends on, we have hundreds of people are watching this webinar right now. So any one of them. Yeah, but right, we're going to for everybody, every, everybody who's joined, uh, we are going to kick off in a few minutes here. Uh, we're just having some, I would say some holiday banter. Um, yeah. I, but I have my within the, the holiday trust tree. No one's gonna turn us in here. Right. Holiday trust tree. Okay. Maybe that's yeah. a is that what you call your the tree behind you? Is that what that is? Yeah, that we can call it that. You know, one year um at Christmas, my family, we found a frog in our holiday trust tree. And it lived there like the whole time. It was wow. great. Can we do yeah. a holiday trust fall tree? Where we're all like kind of falling off of tall things into each other's arms or is that when we all tell the tell about the year when our christmas tree fell over <laughs> yeah we trusted that it wouldn't um and then it definitely did it did fall over yeah yeah um, i've had one fall over one tree one year fell over and now we don't hang our fancy ornaments on the tree anymore it's really sad <laughs> yeah or climb on it i feel like that was the bigger deal um <laughs> Well, we are now at two past, so I think we should kick it off. Thank you, everybody, for attending the holiday messaging that works. This is Message Gears, where all content is good content. Uh, myself, I am Nick uh, Zeke Lopez on the left there. Uh, I would say spelled errantly, uh, but earnestly. Uh, it's I before E for me. And with me is India. Hey, everybody. I'm India. I'm our senior growth manager here at Message Gears, and this is my webinar debut. It absolutely is. This is your first webinar. And and, and to, to kick us off, India, what are we doing today? Um, we're going to learn a little bit about marketing during the holidays and a lot about the holidays. That's right. That's uh, we have, a, we have a, a little bit about marketing during the holidays and a lot of it. Okay, I respect that. Uh, so, uh, we got, yes. And I'm going to send out to everybody during this webinar, you can play along on our message year's holiday bingo card um it's just for fun there's really nothing for the winners but um let us know if you i put the link to the bingo card in the chat so just open that right up it's going to keep you entertained throughout the whole webinar um so Remember just to like bingo. and subscribe to like uh, and subscribe up yeah it's just up all right well but thank you very much for that india uh uh i won't be able to play along because joining us today is our first guest SP of Customer Success and co founder Taylor Jones. All right. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you so much for being on the program today. Um, I, now, I have to ask, what, uh, what are you wearing? Uh, so this is a gift from my nephew. Uh, it is actually an Among Us Christmas sweater, which is uh, pretty exciting to me, if I'm honest. I, uh, I, I I do like that. And your head, you have a, kind of a halo effect, which I'm, I'm appreciating. Um, ah, that was, yes. Yep, that's actually the tree topper from our Christmas tree that's been repurposed for a few minutes. <laughs> okay. I like that. Uh, that. That shows the flexibility we have here at Message Gears. So here's how it's going to go, Taylor. I'm going to ask you what I would say is probably an appropriate question 
for what we what, what might be a corporate webinar. Um, and then India is going to ask you something else. Uh, so let's start off with, I think, the, the thing that the people came here to see. You are uh, you work with customers all day long, sometimes longer than that. Um, you've been on the front lines for years. Can you give an example of, I would say, a holiday program that has really done well or not done well and, and kind of the, the secrets to ex success in, in holiday message? Yeah, so I, uh, I'll turn that question a little bit. So I actually asked a couple of our larger customers to to kind of give me their their biggest flop of a holiday campaign, <laughs> and universally they all declined to answer that. Uh, so for whatever reason, they weren't willing to share that, even in an off the record manner. Uh, but what they did share, which I thought was interesting, was how marketing has been perceived this year and how that's different than what they've done over the previous sure. years. Uh, and it was it was actually universal across the clients that I talked to. Uh, what they found was the actual season itself started much earlier than it has in the past, right? I mean, you've seen this from brands where they started their kind of holiday discounts much, much earlier than they have historically. Um, and they they found that was pretty universal. Everyone did that. They said, I guess the kind of new new normal for the moment of being at home really led to more online engagement, which meant you could you could start your programs a lot earlier. Uh, they also, and this is pretty universal, they ramped up what they were doing. Everybody had more outreach electronically through their kind of you know email, SMS, push channels. That you know they were universally volumes were up and engagements were down, uh, meaning. Overall customer interaction, you know, they were, I'll say, uh, less less involved than they have been historically. But it was interesting. Core loyal segments. Oh, thanks, Nick. I love these reactions. By the way, these are uh, are super sure. helpful. I mean, you got uh, this is net information. So core loyal segments. Uh, even though they're being marketed to a lot more and it, it might seem like a lot of noise, we're actually up in their engagement. So even though kind of universally, the larger population probably felt like they were a little inundated with too many messages, a lot of messages from different brands, et cetera, the core segment of you know those kind of loyal users for these brands actually responded to those higher volumes and had much higher conversion rates than they have historically. That's really interesting. I'm glad you brought up uh, core segments. Quick shout out to Message Gear Segment, our segmentation and activation platform that helps our users understand uh, our, our core segments and their uh, their their uh, engagement therein. One last question, uh, Taylor. Uh, you had seemed to indicate that the holiday uh, season started earlier. Can I put you on record as saying that's the silver lining to this pandemic? Uh, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of different uh, silver linings out there. Everybody's got to find their own. Uh, you know, yeah. there's some industries that have been hit hard. Others are, are really thriving. Um, mm -hmm. I think the key is, and I'm, uh, you know, I, by the way, that was not a planned endorsement of the segment product that just happened. That was Nick throwing it in uh, ad hoc. But I will <laughs> say that the really cool thing about these type of findings and, and being able to kind of visualize things this way is the ability to do exactly that. As you're going through, you're in a very unprecedented environment from a marketing perspective. How do you make sure that things are resonating the way you expect? Being able to see that, see that in combination with how you define your customers is a pretty powerful tool. And I'll stop my marketing kind of salesmanship there and, and go back to, to India's question, which I'm really excited for. Yeah, um, that, that, this is actually why they're all here, Nick. This is, this, they're here for the holiday question. Um, so Taylor, really quick, you've been a part of Message Gears, started Message Gears for 10 years now. Um, could we get like a condensed, quick, easy story of your favorite like holiday party moment at Message Gears? And it Absolutely. doesn't have to be oh. up your wife and carrying her to the cab two years ago. It doesn't have to be. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. I've got a better one. Uh, I didn't realize this was going on the record out to public, but I will say one of my favorite moments um, was when uh, our my, my co-founder and our CEO at the time uh, put together a, a holiday party and after party at um, a kind of prohibition style 
uh, bar pub where you could kind of go in, you had to know the phone number, you got to enter through this really cool little uh, phone booth where the door magically opened. It was a cool environment. Everybody was having a blast. Uh, what we forgot was that we had inv invited our initial investors in message gears out to that party. Um, and forgot to tell them that it was a prohibition style bar that was kind of hidden and you had to have an access code to get in. Um, so my favorite message gears party was all the missed calls that we had during that time from our new investors in the company who couldn't actually attend because they couldn't get into the private party. And that's, uh, yeah, I mean, speaking of uh, investor relations, that's the key, right? Like just, you wanna nag your investors once they're, they're too in is my understanding. Um, uh, you know, they, they still, they're still investors very happy with what we've done here. So it's, you know, it's excited that we've been able to kind of be as successful as we had, but uh, yeah, that was, that was an interesting introduction to a message here's holiday party. And the real key is to make the reservation under BlackRock Financial to keep them guessing. Um, but <laughs> uh, uh, speaking, uh, uh, moving on to our next guest, uh, uh, going from the customer a little bit more towards the platform today, we have our Chief Technology Officer, Craig Pohan. Hello, look at that. Nice. Wait, what do I do with my arms? Well, that, you're supposed to kind of feel <laughs> what you're doing. I'm feeling um, it. I felt yeah. it. Thank you very yes. much. Thanks right, thank you welcome, guys. Absolutely, and and well, I mean, I mean, you deserve uh, all all of this fanfare. Um, so, so Craig, uh, quick uh, background on you. You are a chief technology officer. You've been with the with the company what three and a half, almost four years now. Is that correct? Four. Yeah, accurate. Um, and so, you know, I guess moving forward, the the message years question I would have um, yeah. is holiday traffic. Uh, it's, I mean, it's a busy time, like Taylor was saying, it's the busiest time of the year for, for many of our, our users. Can you tell me a little bit more about why Message Gears is suited to have a high amount of uptime uh, uh, for that traffic? And what is it about Message Gears that makes it resilient to large loads of traffic? We always hear about marketing platforms going down for hours on Black Friday, causing costing people money mm -hmm. and revenue. What's it about Message Gears that kind of avoids that? So, um, I mean, it's a really good question because especially during these times traffic is just unpredictable you don't know when people are going to be sending we don't kind of instruct customers to coordinate sends or space them apart um, we're there for the customer 24 7 so they can send at any time as much as they want and uh, the platform needs to be resilient so the the key part of the key there is thinking about high availability, thinking about scale as you're building the platform. So that was one thing that Message Gears has been built on the foundation of scaling elastically with volume and um, always supporting a high turnaround of, of uptime and reduce the number of variables that could um, you know, break apart or, or uh, impact your site performance. So that's that's a huge key to the messenger side, where you know as long as our upstream partners, which you know is, is Amazon and um, you know other cloud providers, as long as those providers are available, then messengers will be available as well. Awesome. I uh, and I actually forgot to uh, ask you the very important first question. What are you wearing? It looks kind of like a Quasimodo Santa. It's Quasimodo um, Santa, or it's the drama llama of Santa's of uh, Christmas sweaters. Oh, and I think every okay. sweater you need to have like accessories. So I've accessorized with uh, like Christmas Christmas stockings and Christmas boots. Yes. Okay. Very nice. So tiny Christmas stockings. Uh, yes. That's of course. Incredible. Yeah. So uh, uh, India, India, what is your non-message here's uh, uh, question for Craig? Woo. Um. Okay, we've got the age-old question here, Craig. Um, many people, this tears families apart at Christmas, this question. So um, I really hope you answer correctly. But um, is it is the better movie Home Alone 1 or Home Alone 2? And why? Whoa. Whoa. I, uh, this is a tough one. So I have two children, two daughters, who can literally sit and watch Home Alone, the whole series, 
on repeat and just keep it going. And it doesn't even matter the order. You just shuffle them in any order that you want. So in my household, any home alone day is a good day. Um, I'm going to go with one just because, you know, Macaulay Culkin, when he was, you know, very young and, and kind of innocent there, that's, I have to go with one for that, for my perspective, though. I'm right there with you, Craig. So, Although I, um, I want him to do another Home Alone as an adult. I think it would be really interesting. I and I just, real quick, I just want, want to uh, get the, so the first one, men come to the house, child physically scars, terrorizes them away. That Right, that's a plot. Second one, he's in a hotel or something, right? I, I, what happens New York, that? yeah. And, yep. then, and then he physically scars and scares them away, what happens? Then there's a lot of uh, um, uh, Central Park scenes and uh, those kind of New York, New York settings. So they, they focus more on the scenery than, you know, on the, the actual uh, planning for the break-in. Okay, that makes sense. And so- A better question um, is, India, have you ever done a live nativity scene? Because those, you know, that could be interesting. You could be the donkey. Yeah. Wow. I mean, you know, at the end of a Rockettes performance, the Christmas one, uh, Christmas Spectacular, um, they do do a live nativity scene at the end of each Rockettes show. So I have seen one a few times while viewing the oh. Rockettes Christmas Spectacular. I thought so, you were going to drop that you were a Rockette in the past before becoming know, the senior growth manager. I, I meet the height requirement. It was always a, a dream. <laughs> Um, How do you know? Yeah, I did not. Do the Rockets do other shows, or are they just are they like uh, what's it, what's the guy's name that only does uh, Christmas music? They let him out of his cage uh, to do Christmas Michael music. Michael Bublé. Michael Bublé. Yes. Yeah. Besides yeah. those Pepsi commercials where he's uh, writing, you know, fixing the name of all bubble, bubbly water. <laughs> that's why uh, they like him. All right. Well, hey, well, thank you for talking with us, Craig. We have one more guest uh, today, uh, and I'm very excited to bring on less technical, more graphical. This is Brittany Oaks. <laughs> Brittany, how are you? I am fantastic. How are you, Nicholas? I'm doing great. Now, I have to comment on your distinct lack of holiday wear. Is this okay. because you hate the holidays or India? Oh, you found me out. No, I, um, you know, just don't own Christmas sweaters. I own every other type of sweater, just not Christmas sweaters. So I try to make up for it by putting Christmas hats on all my, all my things in my background. So I'm hoping, you know, there's still more. Hmm? Did you take those Christmas hats from the bottom of a uh, Craig sweater? <laughs> don't tell him. It's, <laughs> Don't worry about Get it. stockings on stockings. Um, <laughs> okay. It's, okay. It's the drama llama or Christmas drama llama. You, oh, my, yeah. You, oh, you actually have it. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that was a, a, a real thing. Um, so, Britt, we message gears. Uh, can I call you Britt? Sure. Mm, sure. Okay. Thank you. So, Brittany, uh, message gears has rolled out a website um, last week. Um, and as I understand it, you uh, had a large part in what the website looks like um, and what the user flow was. Can you talk me through rolling out a website at the end of the year and to what influenced what our new, I would say our redesign and, and what the website looks like? Yeah, so we have, um, we've been around for a bit, but we just recently uh, released three products, Segment Message Engage, you know, heard it talked about a little bit just in, the, in this webinar. Um, and these products are fantastic and our branding we felt didn't quite match how excited we were about these products and we wanted to bring a fresh, bright look to our brand to show how our excitement and um, really the outlook for our company. So we uh, decided to take the plunge and do a complete rebrand. And um, if you go to messagegears.com, you can see what we've done. It looks incredible. A lot of people worked on it. Um, but we chose a clean, bright look that's accented by bold colors, geometric shapes, and angles. And those elements combined really make a modern and exciting look for us. For anybody watching, I've put our URL in the chat. Uh, so that's www.messages.com. 
Um, it natively reader, it kind of slashed on an insecure HTTP there. You will get upgraded to, to secure traffic, that's HTTPS. Uh, we do that for all of our um, website users. Um, so if, if Craig and Taylor could come back, I think we should have, uh, if, you, if they're still there, and I won't, I won't play the intro music, um, but uh, I, I believe that India's question for uh, Britt has more of a, uh, a group feel to it. Um, in, India, what, and by the way, good to have us all together. Um, and, and, and by the way, before, uh, before we really get into this, I, I just want to review. Uh, so for favorite Christmas movie, what do we think it was? What do we think are the, the heavy hitters here? Die Hard. Um, <laughs> come along. So, who was surveyed? So the the what was that? Who was actually surveyed? Is this the favorite out of this panel, oh, or to register to register for this uh, for this webinar? Ah. You can put um, down your favorite okay. Taylor, or how it, people how it movie. <laughs> Got it. Okay. So I will tell you right now. Uh, tied in first were Elf and National Lampoon, uh, and uh, uh, then following in second was Home Alone, and then kind of bringing up the bottom were things like Die Hard, Christmas Story, Home Alone 2, While You Were Sleeping, um, uh, South Pole, The Holiday, and, and, and a fair amount of others. Uh, I was surprised how far down Die Hard was. I know people people love that. Um, so, so India, what, what, was, what was the question here for, for, for Brittany? Um, so we have one last follow-up for question for Brittany, and then we'll go into a speed round of questioning. But for Britt, um, what's the worst, like as a designer, what's the worst Christmas product design that you've seen? Oh man, I actually have a few examples. If you want to click the, okay. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, I do. I, I was prepared for this question. It's like, I didn't, I, I didn't know you were going to ask this, but I had these anyway. Um, so this I love because I don't know where to stop or where should, where does Santa stop? I'm not sure. Um, I um, guess. Well, it sounds like Santa's doing something that we really don't want. Like, please stop. Uh, I would, yeah, I would say it was more of the um, unhappy, uh, is in many ways graphic nature of this story that that was troubling to me um how would you have fixed this what would be a better design honestly just making all the arrows point one way okay <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving on. yeah um this one i love because um it honestly is not that bad until you get to the trunk but which looks more like an eye so then it says this family loves christmas eye or a lowercase L. Or a lowercase L. So it could be this family loves Christmas. Ooh. And that just doesn't uh, make sense. And for the tree, uh, uh, informal poll, put your answers in the chat. What, uh, what goes on top of the tree? Is it a star, an angel, or something else? Uh, a ch cherubim type figure. India, what do you have above yours? Change the camera. Tilt the camera. I don't have anything yet, but usually I put a, a Santa Claus up there. Um... Uh, uh, the answers we're getting are getting a lot of stars and Taylor's holiday hat. Um, I, th I think so my <laughs> my wife got mad and took the holiday hat back, so I had to switch to the the Santa hat here. Um, so apologies for that. Uh, one, I'm I'm sorry that our content was so bad. She saw thought the hat was not deserving of the webinar. Two, I just want the audience to know that we are getting a lot of pushback on while you were sleeping is is it's not technically a Christmas movie. Um, I don't know a holiday that celebrates comas um, as much uh, uh, as as whatever it is. But hey, uh, back to the design. Uh, Britt, tell me about this one. Um, this one was pretty simple, but I just love the idea of snowmen sitting around a fire like they're not made of snow. It just seems like an um, overall bad choice of character. Why not elves? Why not reindeer? I think you inadvertently proved Taylor's point of it being a pre-Black Friday sale. The holiday season's getting longer, whether that's digital messaging, print messaging, or otherwise. And uh, finally... Right? 
Well, I, that's going to be in the speed round. Uh, uh, you just wait. Britt, can, uh, take us home with this. What is this? The last one, this gorgeous dis, um, Christmas display in a mall. You remember malls, right? Those exist. <laughs> um, this gorgeous Christmas display in a mall, for some reason, they decided should not be centered under the dome. Just slightly oh, to the bad name. Oh, I was like, my eye was drawn to the book. I thought maybe like you didn't like the, like Rudolph or something like that. Uh, whatever. But they just gotta. Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, well, that's uh, I think that. also Santa could get his light if you see him sitting down there to the right. You know, Santa, he doesn't travel all the time with his ring light. Um, so he just needed to get a little, little bit of that natural sun glow on him for all the photos. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and the vitamin D. He's covered head to toe. He's only got his face. He doesn't get enough. You can't imagine he's eating cod liver oil or whatever food has it. <laughs> I don't know. All right, India, are you ready for the speed round? Um, yes. So we're going to go, I'm going to ask one and then you're going to ask one and we're going to say who we're asking it to. Got it? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. And so by the way, for our guests, quick. Uh, real quick, real quick, real quick. For our guests, this is speed round. We need, we need timely answers. We need, uh, uh this is something that, uh, and feel free to fight over it if you need to. Yeah, you guys can chime in against each other, but it's going to be directed at one of you. Taylor, quick, mold wine or spiced eggnog? Spiked eggnog. Uh, wine. Are you on mute? No, no definitely. Uh, all right, all right. Um, Britt. Yes, Britt, answer the question. <laughs> yeah, Britt, uh, wine or cider? Or eggnog? Cider. Oh, okay, well, so. Can I do cider? Yeah, so cider, wine, eggnog? Yeah, mm, yeah, no, cider, eggnog, wine. Eggnog, it's just an inferior uh, drink. Craig? Oh, wine, cider, eggnog. Thank you. All day. Appreciate that. Yeah, all day. Uh, uh, next question. Would you rather the holiday season be longer, as in it's like four full months, four and a half full months, or shorter? You get a week and a half most. Britt, go first. Um, well, I, I mean, the holidays already start in like August this, this time, so I'm not really, I mean, I guess longer, because like it's a nice time. She answered. She answered. That's it. Taylor, Taylor, go. Shorter. It's already too long. Craig, Craig? you got to break the tie. Break the tie, Craig. I, I think it's kind of longer, right? Because like my Christmas tree was up before Thanksgiving, so it's already like I'm, July this year. July, it's going up. So am I a Grinch here? Is that what we learned? Well, yes. uh. In, in as much as I am also a Grinch, I think that four months is gratuitous. We need to learn to appreciate our day-to-day -day lives and not need this faux holiday spirit popping us up uh, throughout the dark months. And by the way, it really, we can blame whoever invented winter. That's the real Grinch here. Uh, uh, without winter, we wouldn't need the holidays, but uh, that's another thing. India, your turn. All right. Favorite Christmas song or like soundtrack? It's gonna be between Charlie Brown's soundtrack and like classic Jingle Bells. So I know it's a whole soundtrack, but it's a jazz soundtrack. So like jazz, Charlie Brown soundtrack versus Jingle Bells yeah. classic. Also, classic. if you don't want to answer this speed round, it's okay. It's the worst question I've heard. No. <laughs> Brittany. Honestly, anything Carol of the Bells. So there's a jazz Carol of the Bells out there. I'm all for that. Got okay. it. Okay. Did you call me? We're going down the line. Charlie Brown, uh, but I, 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 I'm confused why Craig always gets the last word. I feel like he always gets the one up us. Zinger. It's a zinger there. Uh, yeah, no, so I'm going to have to go with the jazz, jazz soundtrack, because uh, I don't know. Somehow the Charlie Brown just wah, 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 is like in my, in my ear when I hear it sometimes. Okay. Uh, and and I was saying, uh, now with speed round, next year, we have to have the double the size. This is a message here, and we have several executives on this meeting, so this is a binding agreement. Next year, our holiday ha party has to be twice as big as it was to make up for this year. Craig, what are we doing next year? Going down the line. What, what, is, what, are, what, are, what do we do to make up for this? I think we have to start inviting pets and just have it be bigger, more, more, more living organisms. That would totally okay. make it massive. All right, Craig's branching out into Kingdom Animalia. Taylor. Uh, just building on that, a slip and slide. I think those two would go well together. 
and Britt. I want us to like rent out the Hilton downtown and just like go all out with like fire jugglers and all that kind of thing. Yeah, I think you, you know, can do that right now for $10. Well, and I want to say that I think that Will is more in, or sorry, Britt is more in, in what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that we're limiting ourselves by thinking of one night. This needs to be a multi-day affair with travel. So I'm thinking uh, 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 Punta Cana. I'm thinking Cancun. I'm thinking we all go somewhere for a couple days, and then I'm sure there will be dogs there. I'm sure we can make a slip aside like, do all those things. Tulsa, Oklahoma. That is a location, not what I was thinking. Oh, okay. I like right. it. We are at the end of our content. We are at our 30 minutes, uh, going back to the, the front. Guys, any last words out of our guest today? Thank you so much for being a great guest. Uh, uh, anything that we have forgotten, anything you'd like to leave our viewers with today? Anyway. Check out our website. And, yes. And it's in the chat, www.messages.com. Uh, 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 Taylor has messaged me on the side. Um, send as many messages as you'd like. Uh, uh, so that 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 is his uh, his party gift. Um, <laughs> no. Did anyone um, get bingo? Yes. Did anybody win or play bingo? Um, we had a bingo. And India, remind everybody uh, what the prize is for winning bingo. Um, I. I said at the beginning, there is really no prize for winning bingo, but you just know it in your heart that, uh, uh, like the Christmas spirit, how you feel it in your heart, you exactly. know that you so just want free not to put that in the chat because you know in your heart, uh, it's all good. Remember, uh, so thank you very much, uh, messengers. All content is good content. This has been Nick and India hosting our first and probably last webinar. Uh, really appreciate sure. everybody coming up today, and thank you very much for our guests. Uh, uh, happy holidays to everyone. Bye. Bye.